Is it Texas time in the Big 12? Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, taking a look at the Longhorns following maybe Texas's most important win in years. I can't remember when Texas nailed such an important win, and it came against their chief rival, Oklahoma, at the Cotton Bowl in the Red River rivalry, 48-45. to Go back to the last time Texas made it to the BCS championship game, 2009. Ever since then, Oklahoma has owned the Big 12, won almost every conference championship, and Texas has been nowhere to be found. Did the situation turn around for Tom Herman and company on this day? This could be a landmark victory for Tom Herman and this program. Let's break down and take a look at the Longhorns here. Sam Ellinger has been a runner, a leader, a motivator, a guy that's fired up, that spurs on his teammates, but now he's become more than that. He's not just a running back playing quarterback. He's just not a linebacker playing quarterback. He's all of that plus the quarterback who can throw the ball, who can make the touch passes, make the right decisions, knows when to run, and when he runs, he's a game changer. Not in a blur, but he knows where to run. He knows how to pick his holes, and man, he lowers the shoulder and he abuses the defense. He doesn't take the shots from the defense. He lays the lumber on the safeties and the linebacker. Sam Ellinger also is taking care of the football. And we all know that turnovers rule football. In regards to the team that protects the football, wins 85 to 90% of the games. And Sam Ellinger has not thrown an interception for a school record 186 pass attempts. Go back to the first game of the season. That inexplicable loss to Maryland, 34-29, Sam Ellinger finished off that loss in terms of a comeback drive that was brewing, and then he throws an ill-advised pass and gets picked off. But since then, he is taking care of the football, and Texas is winning. He also has two monsters at wide receiver and little Jordan Humphrey, who belies his nickname, not little Jordan Humphrey. He is a big, tall, lanky receiver who outmuscles defenders, as does Colin Johnson. So in these two wide receivers, Texas has two of the best pair of wideouts in college football. They abused Oklahoma secondary, which isn't saying a whole lot. The Sooners lack in the secondary. It's probably the weakest unit on the field for Oklahoma. But they torched them for 15 receptions, 214 yards, and two touchdowns. These guys seem to be taking their turns as number one targets in the big games week after week after week. And in this one, they kind of shared the duty. And really, this was the difference in the game. In addition to Ellinger's running ability in converting third downs, it was getting the ball downfield to these guys. And the run after the catch, the ability to high point the football, outfight the defender for the football, Johnson and Humphrey are really good. Keontae Ingram, uh, 86 yards rushing on this day. Ellinger, of course, had the three rushing touchdowns and 72 rushing yards there. The run game last year was awful. One of the worst in the nation. Just inexplicably unproductive concerning when you, when you consider uh, Texas recruiting that the offensive line could possibly be that bad and the running backs that ineffective. Well, it started out this season just as bad. And they've gotten better week to week to week to week. And it's not a dominant running game, and it probably won't be this season. But it's allowed Tom Herman to work his offense, to open up the passing game, to do some other things. And obviously, Ellinger's running ability has supplemented the inability of this offense to generate rushing yards out of the traditional running back spot. Tom Herman, an offensive mind, uh, was not able to get much out of this offense last year. Texas won seven games in a bowl game due to the defense. But this year, the offense is sharing the load. All right, let's look at that defense. Of course, they gave up some big plays to Oklahoma. Of course, the 45 points given up doesn't look impressive. But from being down 7 to nothing, as Oklahoma came out in warp speed down the field, running plays constantly, wearing out the Texas defense, back on their heels, and bam, Sooners score a touchdown right out of the gate, 7 to nothing. Okay, between that point and going up 45-24, they didn't give up a whole lot during that time, especially considering, again, they're playing the Oklahoma offense here. They harassed uh, Tyler Murray. They were in the backfield chasing him around, throwing him around. 
they were all over him. They were in the backfield disrupting plays. The, the Oklahoma, unlike the Oklahoma secondary, the Texas secondary, extremely good. These guys can play man-to-man. They like to hit. They come after you across the middle. And there was a time frame there from going down seven to taking a 21-point lead in which Texas's defense held Oklahoma to two touchdowns in eight possessions. Charles Amenahieu, he's a monster. B.J. Foster, I really like him emerging as one of the best freshmen in the country in the secondary. Chris Boyd, he's a leader. He lays down the wood. He can hit you, come after you. The NFL scouts are drooling. He's going to be a tremendous player. All right, Texas defeated USC at home by scoring the last 34 points of the game. They then defeated TCU, dominating the second half in that game as well. There's a pattern here. Uh, they beat TCU. They beat Oklahoma. Okay, again, they go down 7 to nothing. It's a close game at halftime. And, uh, and then Texas has a big third quarter to take control of the game into the fourth quarter before, of course, the Sooners came back and scored three touchdowns to tie it up before Texas. And give them credit for this. Think about Texas's position. Oklahoma's the king of the rivalry, king of the Big 12. Texas has not won a meaningful game in quite some time to this magnitude where they could possibly contend for a conference championship. Not this big a game, and they're known for blowing leads, for not stepping up in the big games, and they blow a 21-point lead, and they have all the momentum going against them. Ellinger and the offense put together a drive to win the game, and of course their freshman kicker, Cameron Dicker, good name for a kicker, kicked it through the uprights for the win, 48-45. So it's a gut check kind of victory as well, not just uh, showing that from a talent standpoint that they could match up with Oklahoma and uh, hold down the offense just enough and win in the passing game, but the gut check, that was big in this game, and Chris Boyd is one of the reasons why they can do this. They did the same thing with USC, and we know the Trojans are struggling, but they're still ultra-talented, and Texas had the huge... Uh, second half after losing to USC at the Coliseum last year, after going down 14 to three, they score 34 consecutive points and win that game. They were in a close game with TCU. They owned the second half, winning 31 to 16. All right, so this is a good sign for Texas football that they're playing in the clutch. All right, the rest of the season with TCU and Oklahoma out of the way. The best team in the Big 12, or so we thought, in Oklahoma and TCU, one of the three or four best teams. Those guys are out of the way. Texas has West Virginia at home on November 3rd, at home. And then the rest of the schedule, nobody really stands out. But then again, they're not playing any give-me's either. They're playing a bunch of teams that can look pretty good and put a scare into some good teams on occasion. But... They can also look like trash. Baylor, Oklahoma State, uh, that game on the road in Stillwater. They've got Texas Tech on the road. We've seen the Red Raiders lose to Ole Miss by 20 points. We've seen them come back and beat Oklahoma State by 31 points. We've seen Iowa State go to TCU, only lose by a field goal, and then come back and beat Oklahoma State in a big way. And uh, so Iowa State's been impressive the last couple weeks, and Texas has to deal with them Uh at home. All right, that's the look at Texas football. They're in the driver's seat in the Big 12. Of course, it being the Big 12 scenario, they only have to finish in second place, and that was my prediction preseason for them to finish in second place and then win the Big 12 championship game in an upset over Oklahoma in the title game. Uh, Texas has everything to play for right here. They're 5-1, and they're 2-0, and in actually now 3-0, and including the Kansas State win in the Big 12. Would love to hear your take on Texas football. I'm sure it's quite a bit different than it was after the week one loss to Maryland. Leave your comments, like the videos if you like them, if you just like what we deliver here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, so we bring you the best analysis in college football, even if you disagree with me, uh, like the videos if you like the channel. And obviously subscribe as well right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.